Today I'm going to hand chop with a mallet and chisel this angled through mortise for a wedge and also build the rest of the live edge table. All right, let's get started. All right, so first we're gonna prep the slab. And this slab came from the client's property that lives here in the Black Forester. And a few years ago, we had a forest fire come through here. And uh, it, it uh, took out a bunch of trees and houses and things. Um, so this came from that property. You can see some of the burn mark here. So I'm trying to preserve this piece of bark so it doesn't fall off. So I'm just letting some uh, CA glue soak down in that crack between the two and hoping that it, that will uh, survive the milling process and uh, it'll stay on there. If not, and then I did what I could to save it. We're trying to preserve as much of the story of where this piece of wood came from. And that's why we're using this particular slab for the tabletop. All right, before I flatten it, I want to clean off this gash and a little bit of this crack and this ugliness here. So I'm just going to use my track saw to do that. All right, so I'm going to set up the router sled, but this has quite a bit of a bow in it. So I'm going to use some shims to kind of split the difference so I can try to salvage as much of the thickness of the slab as I can. Now that I look at it a little more, this branch is really throwing it off. So I think I'm going to carve that back a little bit, especially since this side is going to face the wall and I don't want to poke a hole in the wall. So I'm going to kind of decoratively carve that before I get started here. All right, so I have a power carving disc in here and I'm just going to carve that guy off and uh, try to make it kind of a decorative look. Uh, I think that took care of the problem and also looks uh, looks still pretty nice. It's like the branch just got cut off there when they trimmed the tree down. Still a nice natural organic look, I think. All right, that took out some of it, but I'm still gonna do a little shimming to try to split the difference between the two to maintain as much slap as I can, slap thickness. Right, let me get my uh, my rail set up to run the router on and get it flat. All right, when I set up the router sled, I measured the low point on this corner and measured the low point on the other corner uh, and then shimmed them up to where they were the same distance from this. So that way I minimize the amount of wood I have to take off maximizing the thickness of slab and still end up with a nice uh, thick as possible slab and flat. All right, now I got one face flat. I'm just going to flip it over. I don't need the shims anymore. I'll just lay the flat side against the flat of the table. It should be flat enough. Get rid of this sawdust. And then do the same thing to wrap this side parallel. Alright. Got my pine board slab all milled up. I'm going to set this aside. And I'm going to start cutting this guy up into smaller chunks. I'm going to just cut everything oversize and then, then uh, work down from there to mill it to the exact thickness. But I'm going to take my time with this guy because this is a really expensive Wenge uh, board here. So I'm going to take my time laying it out. Try to have the basic chunks laid out, and I'm going to start cutting it down to more manageable pieces between the table saw and chop saw. All right, I got my legs rough cut to width, so it's going to be a skinny leg. Thick leg, skinny leg is going to be the basic pattern for the base. 
And then this guy is going to be the same thickness as these, but since this one gauge is so expensive, I'm going to resaw it on the bandsaw, and then I'll use that piece for something else, some other project down the road, just to save it so I'm not wasting all that material by sending it through the planer. All right, so the skinny pieces are a little oversized in their width and thickness. So I'm gonna joint uh, two edges and then send them through the planer until I get down to the final thickness and width. And that way I'm guaranteed that these guys will be perfectly square. So it doesn't matter how I orient them in the uh, base. Uh, it'll make cutting the joinery a lot easier. And then this guy, I'm gonna send through at the same time. So once I set up to cut the joinery with, for this piece, this piece will be the same setup, so just make it a lot easier. All right, and since these are almost perfectly square, it's easy to get turned around and forget which side you jointed and which side you haven't. So I'm just gonna give it a quick swipe with some chalk just to help me keep track of which edge I've done and which one still needs to be jointed. All right, I have all the spindle pieces clamped to the end of the table over there waiting for joinery, and they're clamped there to help keep them from warping while I work on making the feet. The, uh, the pieces that I resawed off are thick enough to make uh, the feet and upper cross braces, so I'm just gonna use these guys. All right, I got my base pieces milled to final thickness. I'm gonna join one edge and then rip the other edge on the table saw parallel, so I know that it is perfectly square. Then I'm going to set a stop up so I can just very quickly cut them all to the same length. All right, I did my layout for my mortises on one board, and then I'm just gonna use the flat spot of the dog to line them up to the other one, and just transfer from one to the other so I don't have to do the layout. And also, if I screw up, at least I'll be consistent if I laid it out wrong the first time. Right, and I have four of these guys to do. Two of them are gonna to attach to the bottom of the table to hold the tabletop, and the other ones are going to attach to the foot. So this is the foot, and then this will go right here for a little bit of a reveal. To make sure I don't get off, I'm gonna use the same one as the master. So I'll always use this one to mark all the rest of them. Right, normally I clamp a small piece like this between two dogs and uh, you've run my router across here to route out the mortises. But since I want it to go all the way through, I don't want to get into my workbench top. So I'm gonna clamp this guy down and then double stick tape these guys down to it. That way they're held securely and I can still route out the mortises safely. All right, so I got a clipboard double stick tape down and uh, just done my runner, my router with two runners on it. And uh, I'll do a pass, then I'll flip it over or flip it around and do another pass and that will guarantee that my mortises are in the dead center of my, my cleats. So I got my router set up with two runners attached to this piece of acrylic. And I have my uh, clipboard uh, double stuck tape down to the bench to this protective piece of plywood. And I'm just going to, uh, just going to route back and forth 
And then after I get down to the depth, I'm going to take the router and I'm going to turn it around and do another pass. And that'll guarantee that my mortise lands right in the center of the board. All right, so I'm just working on squaring off the uh, the corners for the tins, and uh, yeah, this Wingate is some pretty dense stuff, so it's definitely not an easy task to pair it off. So I squared off one end of my legs and spindles and I set up a stop block since the length of the legs are going to be longer than the miter gauge can handle. So I just set it up so that way as I push through, uh, I'm clear of it before it makes contact with the blade so that way I never have a pinch point between the fence and the blade which could cause kickback. I have my data blade set up with uh, my fence as a stop. There's a little space between the blade and the fence so uh, it doesn't tear up my fence. So I'll take two passes, one to trim the end and then one to cut it to its final length. Then when we're done, we should end up with a uh, tenon that looks like that. All right, so I need to cut two shoulders to fit my, my mortise there. And you could do this on the table saw, but uh, if anything is slightly out of square, these two shoulders might not line up. So I'm just gonna cut it by hand. That way I know that they'll be parallel between there, or they'll connect nicely. And when I go to test fit, assemble it, if anything is out of square a little bit, I'll just be able to use uh, my shoulder clean, plane to clean it up and get it back, back tight. So I have a nice tight joint. All right, so first I'm gonna make my initial cut. Being careful not to cut into the face. I'm gonna use my knife to, to line up my shoulders. All right, and then from my knife line, I'm just gonna estimate the, the thickness of the blade. And that'll give me a notch for the blade to ride in to help guarantee that I'm going to ride flush and square. turned out really good. If there was any little issue, I could just take my chisel, clean that up. Perfect. All right, so we should be good to go here. Now to do the other side. 
All right, I like to mill the lumber as I go in case uh, something warps or something like that. I have uh, enough material left to square it back up. So this is, piece is going to be for the trestle. So I'm gonna mill that guy up right now and then we'll get to work cutting the joinery. All right, so I need to cut a large tenon to go all the way through the leg. So I have my uh, saw blade set up to make a, just a nice shallow scoring cut. And then once I get it cut all the way around, then we'll stand it up to cut the cheeks off. But this method using this as my stop is just gonna create a nice clean shoulder all the way around. All right, so I'm gonna cut this long tenon to go through the mortise on the leg. It's gonna be a through mortise and tenon joint. And I'm gonna use the table saw instead of the band saw, because most likely the band saw is gonna leave a bunch of marks, a bunch of saw marks on the, uh, the finished piece. And I want a nice, tight looking, clean uh, tenon coming through that mortise. So I'm gonna use this, because it'll give me a much cleaner cut. All right, so the table saw did most of the work and I'm just gonna finish the cut up with this guy. So basically what I'm doing is I have two layers of plywood and I'm constructing a jig around my tenon so that way when I route on the inside I know it'll be the exact size of the tenon. That's a pretty snug fit, so I should have a nice fitting joint when I'm done. And I'm gonna fill this strip in so my bearing has something to ride along in here. the center line of the jig and I measured over half the thickness of this guy so I can line this up and I'm going to cut a fence to snap down on either side of these so that way it doesn't go anywhere repeatability that gives that'll give me a repeatable uh, setup each time All right, I have a pattern bit in my router with a bearing on it to ride the inside of my jig. I have a layout line marked where the top of my jig is going to land. So I should put this guy in here.
All right, before I take the jig off, I'm just going to use the square edge of the wall of my jig to, as a guide to square off the corners to make sure I'm nice and square. I cut uh, a few different shapes of wedges to determine which one I like the best. I decided on this guy. So I'm just going to use it as a gauge to lay out my layout lines. Just eyeballing about where I want it to be. Alright, and then mark it all the way around. And I'm going to use a mallet and chisel and chisel from this end and from this end and then hopefully I will meet in the middle and uh, just follow this angle. So I'm going to eyeball that angle as I go down and this one will go straight down. And same thing from the other side. And then hopefully I'll meet right in the middle and I'll have a nice clean shoulders on this side and nice clean shoulders on this side. That's the plan. So now I'm going to take this wedge shape, mill some more winge, and make the actual wedge to fit, fit back in there this same shape. Alright, I'm just going to uh, trace this wedge on this little piece of scrap here. And cut it out the bandsaw, and then do any kind of hand planing or adjusting they need to to make it fit the tapered mortise I just cut. Alright, I got all the parts in it. I'm going to do my glue up in two stages. So I'm going to glue up the legs uh, first, and then after those dry, then I'll glue the trestle and the feet on. Alright, the legs are glued up, so it's time to glue the tenon in. I'm only going to glue, put glue on this portion of the, the tenon. I don't want to put it in the mortise because when I slide this through, I don't want to get glue all over the face of the uh, decorative part.
All right, there we go. Our completed live edge pine table with trestle base. Thanks for watching.